from a cold and wet Johannesburg. It's really cold this morning. It's the 1st of June and really we can feel the winter and we can see the winter and we can experience the winter this morning. But I'm always looking forward to summer. So winter is only three months. It is not so long. As long as you don't have winter in your heart this morning. Please keep summer there. Keep summer in your heart. Winter is too cold and some, some places too dry and too windy. So keep the summer in your heart. Last week we had an amazing time about the three women who was crying out for justice, who, was, who were crying out for, for, for human rights. Um, I talked about the women in America in 1955. Her son was brutally murdered. She refused to, um, to, to bury him in a coffin quietly. After she received him, she didn't recognize him. He was totally bloated. And she put him in a showcase. Yes, for the world to see what they have done to a child. And I've talked to, to Rispa, uh, who spread a sackcloth on the rock. Your sackcloth is your mourning, and the rock is the Lord. The Lord is my rock and my salvation. So she decided to put her mourning aside on the rock, and she started uh, fighting for the bodies uh, of her three sons. And then uh, we talked about Rachel, who was at Ramah, and she cried out uh, for her children who died. But she was at the right place. The meaning of Ramah is high and lofty place. And so the Lord is still speaking to me about this, and um, th all three of them were wrestling. They were fighting, and um, because of the worst that can ever happen is to bury your child. And she, uh, all three of them cried out for justice. You know what? And the Lord is so busy with me, and I listened. I've listened to a, a song that somebody sent me, and it was so amazing because it was totally spiritual warfare. And the lyrics of this song says, We wrestle not with flesh and blood, with powers and principalities. We wrestle not with each other's, listen to this, we wrestle not with each other's love, your feelings and your emotions, but with demonic forces in the heavenlies. You know, when so easily we can fight against each other with our emotions. But you know, did you know that a bruise, when you have a bruise on your body, when you have a bruise somewhere, you are bleeding to the inside. A wound is you can see the blood. You can see, you can see the, the blood running out from the wound, but when we have a bruise, we are bleeding on the inside. And this is worse than a normal wound. The word of God says that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. Yes, we could see the blood. People could see the blood until still today, the blood never loses its power. But he was also bruised for our iniquities meaning that he was bleeding on the inside. His heart was broken and he died with a broken heart. And so easily we can bruise each other with our, not our words only, not our actions, but the emotions, because we all have the spirit of discernment inside of us. And we immediately know when somebody's attitude is not right with us. And so we wrestle not against each other, our love, the love and the feelings and the emotions by demonic forces in the heavenlies. We, and then the lyric said, I have decided I'm going to make a stand. And you know what, my friend, for too long you're battling with this same thing over and over and over again. And there's one thing that I want to leave with you this morning and that is the moment when you repent. The moment when you repent and you go to the Lord and you say, Sorry, Lord, I'm so sorry for what I've done. Please forgive me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Let the water of your word cleanse me. 
Then we turn about turn around, we go back to the, our normal life and we do the same thing over and over and over again. You see, this warfare is not a one day thing. This warfare is not a weekend thing. This warfare is, 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 is a battle that we have to fight daily because the enemy, he never sleeps. He's always awake, always busy with us, trying to deceive us, trying to attack us and keep us from God's promises. And that's why it is so important to know that the enemy will never rest. After deliverance sessions in my office, I said so, so many times to people, be careful. You feel well today. You feel good. You feel that you had a breakthrough this morning. But after a week or two or a day or three, the enemy will never rest and he will come back and he will attack you with that same thing to see if you are strong enough now to fight against this battle, to fight against your weakness. So this is a battle that we have to fight day after day, hour after hour. I don't tell you that you must be wide awake and aware of the enemy. No, we are overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. But he will always attack you. And now the song says, don't we wrestle not with each other's love, feelings or emotions, that's my words now, but with the demonic forces in the heavenlies. And today you must decide, are you going to proceed with this thing? Are you going to, with this, this feeling of weakness every day? Or are you going to make a stand and you're going to move forward and you're going to take back your land? In the name of Jesus Christ today, my friend, we claim back sevenfold everything that the enemy has stolen from you through all these years. Today we stand our ground. Today we're going to make a stand. Today we're going to decide that as from today, I'm going to fight this battle, not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. So easily we want to fight this battle with our razor blade tongue, or we want to fight this battle with, with our emotions and and let me tell you, it's not going to work. You need the power of the Lord. The word of God says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. You cannot fight this battle with your own strength, with your own abilities. No, you cannot do that. But the, use the power of the Lord. Let the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit fight for you. But you have to stand your ground. You have to be wide awake because the enemy will enter in the moment when you don't expect it. You see, he says, I have decided this is far, too far, it's enough and no more. So today you have to decide, I'm getting done with this thing in my life. My weaknesses, whatever is attacking me, I have to fight against it. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says in the New Living Translation, for we are not fighting against people. Listen to this. We are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world and against wicked spirits in the heavenly places. You see, we are fighting something that the eye cannot see. We are in a warfare and we are in a battle. And let me tell you, you're fighting against something that your eyes cannot see. And so easily we want to fight against the things that the eyes can see. But no, the Lord says, you are fighting against evil spirits. You can never ever see it with your eyes. Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 12 in the Message Bible. Listen to this. God is strong and he wants you to be strong. You see? You cannot fight with weaknesses. You have to stand up and you have to be brave and you have to be bold and you have to decide. Listen, this is enough. 
I'm not going to take it any longer. So take everything the master has set out for you. Listen to this. This is now the Message Bible. I love the Message Bible. So take everything the master has set out for you. Not for me, for you, for us. Well-made weapons of the best materials. Did you know that the, 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 um, the weapons, according to Ephesians 6 verse 12 and further on, is, is a typical weapon of the Roman soldier. And they used the best weapons. And Father will want you to, Father want you to use the best weapons, not your own power, not your own might, not your physical strength, but He want you to use the best well-made weapons of the best materials and put them to use you so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil, uh, um, everything the devil will bring on your way. You will throw it on your way. Everything that the devil is throwing on your way, you will be able to stand against it. You know he's very sly and uh, he's, he's weaker and he will come at the moment that you don't expect it and he will come he knows your weakest point. He knows where your weaknesses are. And he will attack you right there. But it is so amazing. Um, he says that this is a life or death. Fight to finish against the devil and all his angels. So you must know this is a life and death fight. You cannot give up. You cannot throw in the towel. You have to stand firm. You have to stand strong. You have to be bold. And you have to stand up and fight against the evil plans of this wicked, evil enemy. You see, you cannot play with the tricks of the devil and think you will overcome him. So you cannot be weak and think you will overcome him. You have to stand strong in the name of Jesus. You see, all the, all the weapons in Ephesians 6 is, is, is there to protect you except one weapon. And this is a sword of the Lord. The sword is your is the two-edged sword. It is the word of God. That is your weapon that you can use to fight with. The other weapons are there to protect you, to protect your mind, to protect your, your heart, to protect uh, your feet. You have all authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy that will do you no harm. You see, you have, you have authority if you have that shoes on. You must take every piece of the armor and you must wear it. Otherwise, there will be an open space and you will die instantly spiritually. That's why I always say the belt of truth. I love that because where do you wear it? In your middle, in the center. Jesus is the center of it all. So if you have Jesus on you, if you have Jesus, if you, if you put Jesus on you, you can be sure that he's there fighting with you in this battle. And this helmet of salvation is also so important because it has to protect your mind. You cannot fight this battle if your mind is not right so get your mind in order you have to decide I'm gonna take up the sword you have to decide I'm gonna do it not by my own strength but by the power of the Lord so see that you are protected that you are sealed off with the blood of Jesus Christ nothing and nobody can stand against this against the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will never ever lose its power and it is there for you to seal you off, to protect you and every door that you have opened for the enemy to enter in, repent first. Repent, close that door, seal it off with the blood of Jesus Christ and you can move on. You know, you cannot fight and stop fighting. You have to move forward. You have to walk forward. You have to be brave and to be bold in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The sword is so important. If you want to read more about the sword that you use 
for, for, for the battle, the sword that, you, that is in your hand. Go to Ezekiel 21 and read about the sword. It flashes like lightning. It is amazing. Go and study Ezekiel 21 to see how amazing this sword is and how it can flash. It is like lightning. You can use it to the left and to the right. It is so amazing. Go and read Ezekiel 21. And then Hebrews 4 verse 12, the sword is so amazing. It will even expose your weaknesses and you know where, where you are standing with the Lord the moment when you read Hebrews 4 verse 12. I love it. It says that the sword is sharper than the sharpest knife. It's a two-edged sword and nothing can stop the sword. If you have the sword in your hand, you are more than an overcomer. You are brave and bold because you know that you are not fighting alone, but God is also fighting with you in this battle. My friend, it was so good to talk to you this morning. It was so good to, to, to just be in fellowship this morning around the Word of God. I pray for you. I pray that Father God will make you strong in this battle. I pray that wherever you are now, that you will be sealed off with the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray that your weaknesses will become your strong points in the name of Jesus. I pray that wherever you feel this battle is too much for you this morning, that Father God will just come and raise your wings and just start flying, my friend. You are not weak. Although or maybe you have a broken wing this morning, learn to fly with a broken wing. Father God is with you. Have an awesome week. I love you. For the love of Jesus, never forget that. Have an amazing Tuesday. Choose to love. Choose to smile. Choose to be friendly. Choose to be an overcomer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.